Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the Raycaster game in C++ series and in this video we'll finally get into the texture floor part of our Raycaster. This image is going to be our Raycaster texture image and without further ado let's jump right into the implementation. So here I have gone ahead and opened up my renderer and inside of the header file of this renderer we are going to have another texture here. We have got a wall texture already. We are going to add another texture called floor texture. Uh, and we are going to load this from the image file in a similar way that we load the wall texture. So let's just copy that and uh, I'm going to go here and paste this. Of course we are going to change this to use the wall texture. Uh, instead of the wall texture we are going to use floor texture and uh, I have stored the image in floor texture.png. So it's going to load it from the file and of course we are going to perform the check to ensure that the image is uh, uh, you know always a perfect scale. So if the image is not scared then we are going to uh, give an error and exit. So uh, we are going to do this and of course now we not uh, really need to return right now so we can just uh, remove this the reason is that uh, if one texture fails to load then we don't necessarily need to make the other fail to load as well so we are going to remove all of those uh, return statements that we have added so now let's go down here and uh, inside of here uh, you can see that we are drawing our rectangle uh, here for the sky. I have removed the rectangle drawing for the floor because uh, uh, we are not going to draw the floor anymore as a rectangle. We are going to draw it manually with a texture. So for that we will remove this uh, uh, drawing rectangle code and we will uh, we'll do the floor code just before the wall code. So we are going to cast the wall rays here so that this is going like over each uh, you know vertical column inside of the screen and then drawing a uh, column of the appropriate size for that to represent our walls and before we do that we'll draw our floor and for our floor we'll draw it scan line by scan line like horizontal scan lines and not vertical ones so this is gonna be drawn first we'll first draw our floor and then we'll draw the floor uh, walls after that and the walls might override the floor in some places and uh, that would work correctly so uh, we'll go ahead and begin our floor and we'll need to do this after we have done these basic calculations and the reason for that is that we'll be needing this direction and stuff uh, for our floor calculations as well. So let's go here and as I said we are going to work horizontal scan line by scan line and for that we'll need to make a horizontal loop. Now, uh, for the horizontal loop, we'll go, uh, we'll say y is equal to screen height by 2. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, uh, we know that uh, our screen is uh, equal to screen height pixels and the top of the screen is at 0 uh, with our coordinate system. So that means that the center of the screen is at screen height by 2 and uh, we are going to start from the center of the screen and go till screen height which is the bottom of the screen. So essentially this will allow us to cover the bottom uh, half of the screen. And this will be, uh, be where our floor is. So uh, here we can get started with actually drawing our floor. And for drawing our floor, uh, the method we'll use is that we'll cast two rays. And these rays will not be like traditional rays. Uh, they will actually be just uh, uh, kind of like directions. They will be uh, basically uh, one will be for the actual left side of the screen. So the leftmost column and the other will be for the rightmost column and then we'll linearly interpolate between these two and fill in all of the other columns ourselves. So for calculating this let's create an SF vector 2F. Let's call this ray dear left. Uh, yeah let's just call it ray dear left. And this will represent the leftmost ray of course and this is calculated very similarly uh, simply by saying direction minus uh, uh, our plane. And uh, for the ray dear right it's uh, uh, quite obvious that it will be direction plus plane and this will give us uh, this with our camera plane it will give us the left and right side of that. With this calculated the next thing we'll need to calculate will be the distance from the camera to the floor for the current row and we'll call this variable row distance and uh, for calculating row distance this is going uh, we need to calculate two more things and these are going well uh, actually not really calculate them on the go we are going to first of all for the first thing we are going to create a constant expression float and we are going to call this camera z and this will represent the actual vertical position of our camera in the 3d world and this camera z is uh, uh, we'll just assume that our camera is in the center of the screen so this is going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by our screen height and uh, this will give us our camera z and we can go down here and this is going to be equal to our camera z divided by our actual y value. Uh, 
like that however uh, this is actually incorrect since our pixel is uh, the center of the screen is not at zero we'll need to calculate uh, we'll need is the center of the screen we'll need zero for that so uh, we'll convert the y value to a float and then we'll subtract screen height uh, by 2 from it which will give us the correct uh, offset from the center of the screen which is what we actually need for this calculation and with that we will have our row distance calculated after this we will now calculate two vectors uh, we are going to say sf vector 2f and this first one is going to be our floor step and this will represent the actual amount in world coordinates that will step from left to right or uh, wherever top from bottom to when we are moving and uh, this is calculated very simply we can just take our row distance and as i said we are going to use linear interpolation for this so we'll take our row distance multiply this by ray direction of right uh, and uh, uh, subtract from this ray direction left so this will give us the actual it's basically like linear interpolation and we'll divide this by our screen uh, width like that now the next thing to calculate will be the actual initial floor position and for that we'll need to have the actual position of the camera or the player uh, in the world and uh, we need to uh, you can see that in here when we are calculating our row, ray position we are doing it in a similar manner uh, we'll do it basically the same way here so we'll go here we'll say sf vector 2f and it might be better to just store it in a variable since we are uh, reusing it so let's say sf vector 2f let's call it position and this is gonna be equal to player dot position and we are going to divide this by our map size which will give us the position in map coordinates instead of word coordinates and for ray position we'll just assign it to the variable position like that and uh, for the uh, you know inside of here we'll use the this position variable for calculating as well so for this we'll just call this uh, variable floor and this is uh, the initial point of the floor is going to be calculated very simply we are going to take our position and then we are going to add to this our row distance multiplied by so uh, row distance is a float so we can multiply it by a vector and that vector is going to be our ray direction left and we are going to multiply this by our row distance and then add it to the position and that will give us the correct uh, actual uh, you know floor vector and uh, with that we have got our initial calculations all done and now we'll need to go from uh, you know right to left actually uh, not right to left left to right on the uh, you know we have got we are in a row right now so you, you know we are going over each row and now we'll need to go over each cell in the row uh, or each pixel in the row you can say and we'll need to fill that out accordingly so we are going to have another for loop here so i'm going to score t i uh, x we are going to call this x is equal to zero x is less than screen width x plus plus like that and uh, this will go over each uh, actual pixel and now we'll need to draw the appropriate uh, uh, you know color or whatever and we'll need to provide of course the correct texture coordinates as well now for those uh, we'll need to figure out a way to actually draw this and uh, since we are drawing just pixels there are a lot of way to do that but uh, uh, let's first go with the simplest way let's just use a vertex array now that is very simple so we can just use a vertex array let's call this uh, floor pixels and we are going to this is going to be of type sf points to represent individual points so we'll create a vertex array of that sort and uh, uh, yeah we can just draw it later so if i go down here you can see we create a, a render states with the wall texture and uh, we are gonna go ahead and go down here we are going to just say states dot texture is equal to we are going to change this texture to be floor texture like that and then we'll call target dot draw again and we'll call this on actually our uh, you know floor pixels here and floor pixels like that and we'll pass it our states as well and uh, yeah that would work and now all we need to do inside of this loop is that we need to uh, fill the vertex array of the floor pixels accordingly with the, the correct data and then you should get drawn First, we'll calculate the actual integer cell coordinates. So we'll go ahead and say SF vector 2i, and this will be integer, and we are going to say cell, uh, let's just call it cell, and this is going to be, uh, we are going to initialize it with our floor, actually, uh, not floor, uh, not the floor function, our floor variable. And uh, uh, the way it will work is that it will just truncate the floating point part, and we'll get our integer coordinates. And then we'll need to calculate our texture coordinates. We'll do that in a second. Let us create the text coordinates here. And we'll, uh, we'll actually, you know, fill this in with the correct values in a second. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get our floor pixels array. 
and we'll say dot pent and we'll pass in an SF vertex and for the construction of the vertex we are going to first of all give of course the uh, position which is going to be uh, our x and y you know the actual indices that we are using for our loop so we'll just say x and y here and for the text coordinates we can pass those as is and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it that's going to work and uh, the next thing we'll need to ensure is that we actually just uh, after we are done with this we are going to go ahead and take our floor and add uh, to this our floor step that we calculated earlier so we are going to increase this by floor step uh, because remember this floor step is the amount of value we need to like actually uh, you know increase our floor variable each frame so we need to make sure we are not each frame each cell so we need to make sure we actually call that so for each pixel so now we need all that's left is to calculate the texture coordinate Calculating the texture coordinates is uh, very simple. So we'll go here and first of all, let's just create a float. Let's call this texture size and we're going to set this to our floor texture. Uh, floor texture dot get size dot x and the x and y are same so it doesn't matter what we choose so now we are going to take our textured size and for the coordinates we are going to just multiply this and remember that right now we are going to calculate both the x and y coordinates and uh, you know for the walls we just used to calculate the x coordinates and the y used to remain the same we need to uh, calculate both and uh, they can be calculated really easily by subtracting uh, our uh, you know self long floor and before we subtract that we'll need to go here and cast this to a vector to f and this will give the essentially the same effect as uh, taking the actual mathematical floor of our floor variable so we'll uh, basically truncate the we'll only get the fractional part and remove all of the whole number uh, from it and this will give us our correct texture coordinate so let's go ahead and if i actually run this you'll notice a small little problem uh, which is that our floor is actually being drawn on top of our uh, walls which is because well that's the way we are doing it in and so if i go down here you can see that uh, we are drawing our uh, floors uh, you know afterwards so we need to draw the floors first so we are going to uh, go here and i'm going to change this to use floor texture and we are going to draw floor pixels here floor pixels and we are going to change this to draw walls uh, like that and uh, we are going to draw wall texture so now let's run this and you see that our floor textures start to appear and they're all working quite nice and we can see the floor texture and it, uh, it and it looks pretty good so that means that we have got our floor textures completely implemented however one thing you might notice is that we get a slight frame drop so in order to demonstrate this further I'm going to open up our main.cpp file here and in here we are going to after we are done updating our window we are going to go here and say window.set title and we are going to set its title to raycaster and we are going to also put the actual frame rate in here and the actual fps that our game is running in is just the uh, inverse of delta time so we'll say std to string to convert the flow to a string and we'll take one divided by our delta time like that and this will give us the frame rate so just to compare things i'm going to go here and uh, uh, i'm going to just undo everything until we get back to the point where we did not have any floor texturing so let's uh, do that uh, actually uh, yeah now let me go ahead and run this and you can see that right now it's uh, oh actually it still has that because i saved uh, didn't save so let me do this and now i'm going to run make and you can see that uh, right now without the floor rendering it's rendering at uh, almost 2000 frames per second or something of that sort which is actually quite a lot and uh, if i go ahead and however go ahead and put all of the floor rendering code back in here and then save it and now if i run this you can see that the frame rate drops to around 30 which is a lot of a drop and the main reason it happens is because uh, uh, for one half of our screen we are practically drawing like 600 uh, Mm, you know for a single line we are drawing 600 pixels actually 1200 1200 per scan line and then there is uh, this many scan lines and that is causing quite a big drop in performance and is hurting it quite a bit so in the next video we'll explore some techniques to optimize this along with some other stuff so make sure to stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and